this is the comp plan, everybody, and uh, Mike Wagner has been spearheading it with the task force. Correct. Uh, Ex-member of the Planning Commission, now a full member of somewhere out there in the business world. Jennifer has uh, been working hard on this particular project, and uh, we have a timeline. Uh, is the will be presented to the uh, supervisors, supervisors meeting in two two weeks. October. What's that? Well, well, yes, for for approval, but we right. we need to get in front. We need to get this moving. Right. Do you have to get it moving for tomorrow's meeting? Correct. Or the next one? I think it's the next one. I think it's yes. the next one. So, Correct. Mike, it's all yours. Okay, good evening. My name is Michael Wagoner. Uh, as mentioned, I'm a member of the Comprehensive uh, Task Force, as Bruce and Jim and several other members uh, in, the, in the audience. We spent the last nine months working with a <clears throat> group of um, consultants, uh, Thomas Commit Associates, Jennifer Rents uh, leading the project, uh, Brandywine Conservancy, um, Sheila Fleming was running that part. We also partnered with the county, too. Uh, Jennifer Spears ran our grant. Uh, the comprehensive plan was put together uh, as a, well, we needed to do it. It was another 10 years, so as part of the Missile Planning Code, we need to update our comprehensive plan. Tonight's presentation uh, is a combination of nine months of intensive work, a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of uh, discussion amongst the Ordnance Task Force, uh, and then a lot of back and forth with our consultants to put together the official map, which is basically what Jennifer is here to present tonight. The official map is what we will use for the next 10 years as we move forward uh, with our growth and or not growth or the direction in which the township needs to go, to go forward with. A lot of the data in this plan came out of our survey. Uh, each individual residence in the township was, was mailed a survey. Uh, also, it was available online. We got an excellent response from our numbers. On, on the return of the response, and from that we were able to garner a large amount of information which went into this plan. All that information was put together, put together, reviewed, reviewed again, reviewed again, changes made, and this is what we've kind of come up with. A lot of time and energy. So tonight's presentation is really the start to the finish. Right now we are here to go over the plan and then hopefully in the next few months we'll be able to have it ratified by the Board of Supervisors um, and make it official. So Jennifer, it's all yours. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. This over here. Okay. Um, it has been, as Michael said, it has been my pleasure to work with the Ordinance Task Force, a comprehensive plan task force over the past 10 months to bring this plan together. I'm going to kind of do a really high level overview of it, and I apologize to everyone in the audience for having my back to you. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but I'm certainly open to any questions that you all have. And, um, you know, really had a, was a great process. So let's jump into it. As Michael said, it is something that is required, but I also like to think that these plans are a chance to kind of reevaluate the township's priorities, their values, and where you're looking as you move forward. Um, it's not just that we have to do it, but um, what is it that we are going to do as we move forward? And it's also important, I'm mean, sorry, these are a little small, but uh, it's also important because it does give you um, opportunities to pursue grants and um, it supports policy changes, whether it's zoning ordinances, whether it's variances, it's different sorts of things um, that the comprehensive plan does um, incorporate into the body of it. And so this is just an overview of our schedule. The big star is where we are in July, and I'm happy to say we are right on time, um, and we're hoping to once we go through a public review process with the county as well as surrounding municipalities, what's known as the Act 247 review, uh, we will be back before the board in September or October for the actual adoption. Uh, Michael already talked about the survey. Just as a point, it was nearly 29% of, of households in the township that responded, which is just a phenomenal rate. And so congratulations to all of you, um, as well as to the township, as the staff and the ordinance committee for actually getting that, um, getting that mailer out and, um, and getting that feedback. Because it really means then that what we have in here is supported by um, a, a good portion of the township. Just an example of why people, what things that people responded. Uh, why are they, why did they move to live in East Brandywine Township? Quality of schools, scenic beauty, and housing affordability were the top three. Um, 
We also looked at open space, uh, recreational, what issues are most important, and that goes to, oh, and the, you can't see it from back there, sorry, but open space conservation, natural resource protection, and opportunities for um, passive recreation were the top three most important in that area. And so these items specifically are highly reflected within the language and the goals and objectives of the plan. Um, I'm just gonna skip right over that because we want to get into it. We, as part of the public input, also did a series of stakeholder interviews with um, some specific township staff, chief, chief of police, as well as fire, um, fire chief, and got their input. And we had a community engagement session in this room last September in person. Um, wasn't as well attended as the survey responses, but it certainly um, did provide some additional input, particularly in regards to trails and kind of marking up some of the maps that we had going. And so what we boiled down to, there are 10 specific sections um, that each had goals and objectives. Uh, you know, one of the priority areas was Guthriesville Village, and so we have, for each of those sections, we have a goal, objectives, and then the strategies. I'm not gonna go into each of them in great detail, um, but again, Guthriesville Village was really, you know, the, the picture on the, on the left there is uh, what was a master plan that was developed back in 2014, and kind of how to evaluate that moving forward. Uh, but also keeping the kind of spirit of it in the sense that Guthriesville is a historic and traditional center of the township. We want to keep that, um, develop ways to make circulation more um, smooth, particularly there was a, a loop road originally. Now we're looking at just an Eastville, East Reeseville Road extension, say that five times quick, um, and maintaining that historic character of the area are really the main focus areas in that in that specific area. Open resource protection, continuing to leverage the township open space funds. One of the things that we heard um, over and over was really the emphasis upon um, preserving what open space is left in the township and doing our best to do that. Also focusing on groundwater and surface water supplies uh, and, and you know, kind of dipping our toe in the water in terms of how to create more climate resiliency within the township. Uh, parks and recreation and trails. Again, as I mentioned earlier, trails was uh, heavily supported through the survey, and so we're really focusing on um, putting out the map in the t in the comprehensive plan. Really focuses on how to create implement the East West Trail Plan, which connects, of course, the Struble Trail over to Hibernia Park in West Brandywine Township, and then kind of create off of that spine. Um, connections into individual neighborhoods, into Guthriesville, and um, you know how to go about acquiring easements um, either through land development or where the township needs to to step in and 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 get creative. Uh, Parks and Rec uh, continuing doing what we're doing, really have that continue that um, great focus on Bondsville Bondsville Mill. Park, uh, but also looking at the other parks in the township to make sure that the access is there, that they're being used to the best of their uh, of what's available, and uh, continuing to serve the township as it grows. Community character. This goes back to historic resources um, and maintaining that accurate inventory. We also there was a big support for education and historic um, events within the township, and so keeping that continuation of support for the historic commission, the use of the newsletter, the use of community events, all those types of things, and even growing them so that we can maintain the um, support for historic preservation in the township. Energy conservation and climate adaptation. This is a new section with the within the comprehensive plan. It was not part of the last one. The Brandywine Conservancy did what they called a climate profile for the township, which is included as one of the appendices in the back. And, um, you know, by the way, just for everybody in the audience, we do have this posted on the website um, to see any of the specific sections and take a little closer look at it if you so desire. Uh, but basically focusing, uh, you know, kind of five areas, focusing on the township facilities and buildings themselves. Uh, how to create more energy efficiency within the built environment, mainly through encouraging through um, ordinances and regulations, looking at renewable energy resources, uh, public-private partnerships, and of course looking ahead at 
um, the impacts of climate change again. Community facilities and utilities. Um, again, you know, making sure that as the township grows, which it has grown at um, you know rapidly over the past 20 years, and you know we'll probably slow down a little bit moving forward, but you're know, making sure that our community facilities and utilities main are maintained, um, maintain the quality of life, keep up with the pace of growth, and uh, you know particularly in regards to uh, public safety, that the excellent levels that are are given now are, are maintained. Yeah. Transportation is obviously a, a, a big concern among residents in the township and for good reason. And so there is a, uh, a focus on the Route 322 corridor and how to improve safety both within Guthriesville, the main intersection, but also at other priority intersections along, uh, along that route. Uh, making sure we have a capital improvement plan in place to maintain bridges and roads in good repair, uh, looking in the long term at public transportation options along Route 322, uh, you know, and, and traffic calming on the local roads. So, you know, right now, the township does not have specific policies, so people come into the township, they're not really, there's not a you know, kind of like when somebody comes for a variance, we know exactly what step to step is. You know, establishing that policy and that procedure for somebody when neighborhoods come in um, to look at traffic calming, making sure that that's something that we can provide guidance to them on. And then the future land use is kind of where everything is summed up. And so this is the new future land use map. It actually um, is different than the official map, which is also part of this project, but is not being presented tonight. Uh, so this is a future land use map, and this is meant to, this is where the zoning map is meant to be consistent with the future land use. And so it's showing us where, uh, you know, we, the pink that you can all see is where, is really where our commercial areas are. The light green is preserved open space or, and, and intended to remain open space. The brown outlines are the agriculture. And then the white is actually existing residential. And so and then there's that green area, and those are areas that we know are under development. Uh, yeah, under development of active applications coming in and will have open space as part of their plan because of the, the design requirements. Okay, so there were, what did I say, 10 sections, 65 action items. <laughs> and, but as we promised at the beginning of this process, we didn't want a laundry list that when, once the plan was adopted that we didn't know what to, where to begin. And so these are the short-term implementation items. There are 15 of them, if I'm correct, 12 of them. So something that's a little, that's a little more um, easy to bite off. Uh, there is looking at the, the zoning map in terms of updating the TND2 boundaries so that the um, Causeland Farm is not within that development zone for the TND2, but um, you know the priority is for is to encourage preservation if, if at all possible. Um, the East Reeseville Road extension, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the priorities. Adopting the official map, which will be the next step in all of this, uh, which is kind of working out some of the. The official map shows basically planned trail and community facilities. So road extensions, the Reeseville Road extension is shown on there, as well as trails and parks. And so we're just fine tuning that before we bring it to the public um, process. Um, in updating the, uh, sorry, adopting the sewage facilities plan. We talked about priority trail connections. Uh, consider updating the transportation impact ordinance. Impact the ordinance, sorry. That's one of the big considerations to come out of this, especially to make sure it hasn't been updated since 2000, 2002, somewhere in there. Um, and that traffic calming policy. So these would be kind of the initial out of the, out of the box type of things that the township would be focusing on as we move forward. And you can, that's a picture of the current official map. Like I said, I don't have a, a version of the draft just yet. Uh, I did already <laughs> receive some informal comments from the county on the plan, um, and so these changes have are, will already be incorporated into the next step, into the next draft, uh, which, again, with any comments that we received tonight, as well as um, you know over the com couple next week or so, 
um, would be incorporated into the plan before hopefully it is approved to go out for that Act 247 review. So with that, I know that was very fast, but again, I didn't want to go, if I go into too much detail, then we're here for another half hour, so. <laughs> Are there any comments or questions? Any comments? 